launched on WWE Network earlier in the year. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Impact was moving, and we kind of wondered what that was going to be in their few months off, and it was very awkward, and some could argue probably still is a little awkward. Uh, and then Ring of Honor popped up, and they were like, what is happening on Wednesday nights? There is so much wrestling. This is amazing in some respect that it's happening. Maybe not with the product that you guys actually got to watch. Mike knows for certain. Um, so... We're, we're at the point, first of all, there's big news tonight. Let's mention this. Uh, NXT has a signing with Kana, a big Japanese star, I believe. Uh, was one reason Eamon was here lurking for a little bit. Uh, then he gets the pad up. Eamon, uh, and since he didn't get an introduction, Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in Texas, uh, and also the guy that knows the, dic- the, the human dictionary of indie wrestlers. Uh, why... Other than uh, I like the Asian ladies, um, why should I be excited about Kana getting signed here in the WWE? <laughs> wow. That is, man. that is an insight. Wow. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, to go from that, uh, I think the reason that you should be excited uh, comes from uh, – I mean, think to – this is the bit, first big – Japanese female wrestling star to come into the WWE since the days of Bull Nakano and, and Aja Kong and, and those levels of talents. And I would contend that was probably a peak year for WWE mm-hmm. uh, as far as women wrestling goes. Maybe not as far as prominence, but in, in, in a case of quality in-ring professional wrestling. I don't think anything beats that 93, 94 kind of era where Bull Nakano was champion and you were bringing in you know, your Aja Kongs and your Chaparita Asaris and your talents such as that. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's very important because Kana does bring in a very different style to the WWE. Uh, obviously, that Japanese style that uh, that, that a, a Hideo Itami Kenta a, a became famous for. It's cool to see that those talents are getting signed, but it's also cool to see that it's not limited to just male talents. Um Kana, I think, has been probably the most recognizable Japanese female wrestler of the past 10 years, I would say. Uh, There are some other very uh, notable, prominent ones as well, but as far as names people recognize, she is definitely one of the top as far as talents to have emerged in in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, She's definitely extremely important. Uh, Her – she has an an intriguing – she also has something I think that the Joshi Japanese talents, female talents from the mid '90s didn't have, which was she did have a level of is that she does have a level of beauty and and of sex appeal or whatever you want to call it. Uh, not to say that you know your Bruno Nakanos and Aja Kongs aren't attractive, but they weren't you know be really considered that. Kana is kind of considered both, um, and and I think that. She brings a, a new life to the NXT women's division. Uh, there was a question of whether things would dip after uh, your Sasha Bankses and your Charlottes and your Becky Lynches got called up to the main roster. And uh, with Kana now in the mix, uh, not only is you know you have a top level talent, but I think people are going to be forced to step up one way or the other. Um, and you know, I, I, I think this is definitely the the fresh life juice that the uh, the uh, women's division in NXT need, needed mm-hmm. uh, with the losses of three of their top talents. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think this is a talent that people should be keeping their eyes on uh, in NXT. I'm excited to see what uh, emerges for her uh, now that she's officially gotten signed. That's awesome. And, and you, I think you highlighted a, a potential issue that, that they could see with NXT, the worry about what would happen with the, with the talent, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I think... You can certainly expect with NXT a lot of highs and valleys because it's going to be hard for them to keep a consistency. There, I mean, you could see them signing. What if Finn Balor and uh, Kenta are uh, had, had, uh, Hideo, geez, Hideo? Thank you. Well, he hasn't been on TV for a while, so I forgot his name. That's fair. Yeah. Um, um, you know, what if they didn't work out? What if they didn't adapt very well? What if Kevin Owens wasn't a breakout? Holy crap! Hit that he was right, and they just floundered. You know, um, it's not like it hasn't happened before. You know, what if uh, uh, Gargano and and and, and Tomosa Trampa come in and they they don't adapt, you know, and it doesn't work out. Now we have a hole in the roster uh, of that development. Who do you bring up? 
you know, or does somebody else does somebody else step up? Um, it's it, it, in the end, while we love the product and we love what's happening down there, it is still developmental. And now, as they're selling out fourteen thousand seat arenas in in Brooklyn, they still have to make sure they keep that level of quality, don't they? Yeah. So. Well, it, it's also hard to kind of compare their pay-per-view shows to their weekly programs mm -hmm. because they do only get one hour a week. Right. It's not like WWE where you're inundated with product after product after product. Like the weekly shows are allowed to be a little lackluster. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the weekly show should not be the same quality as the pay-per-view. The expectation is lower. Yeah. I will, I, I will attest to that though. Cause I, I mentioned this, uh, I believe, in the Facebook group because uh, NXT is rolling into Texas in two weeks, mm. and uh, I bought tickets for the NXT Austin show. I'm slightly disappointed by the card that they've announced to where I have literally thought of going to the Ring of Honor show instead. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Finn, Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin in the main event doesn't do it for me. Mm. Neither does Bailey versus Dana Brooke. I love you, Bailey.